Tim, and welcome to Watch You Want. Today, we have a clash of titans. A few days ago, I did a comparison of an Omega and a Breitling sports watch, chronograph GMTs respectively. Those watches were remarkably well received on our channel, so I thought I'd up the ante this time. We're going with chronographs again, but we've gone from the sports watch, tool watch sector to high horology, and believe me, we have gone sky high this time. This is not so much a winner and loser comparison. This is about comparing and contrasting the Jezure Le Coul Dual Met a Chronograph Limited Edition 18 karat white gold, one of 200, with the iconic Alango Unzuna Datagraph. This watch redefined the modern Otagam chronograph segment when it debuted in 1999. At the same time, when it debuted in 2007, the Duomet was voted Time Zone's Watch of the Year and recognized as a genuine breakthrough in modern horology. The first dual drivetrain watch housed within one case, regulated by a single escapement. And in 2010, this model, the limited edition white gold, was called the greatest variant of JLC's most important modern watch. Each one of these is iconic of a great manufacturer, a true manufacturer. Each one of these is a chronograph, a manual wind watch, a formal piece but very versatile because of the combination of white metal and the black dial. Now, each one of them features that black and white color scheme. Both of them have slight distinctions that really set them apart, and these details are key. But I want to talk about what makes them great. And what makes them great is that each one is limited edition, handmade, comes from a fantastic heritage, and is individually one of the most important modern references in high horology, period. Now, let's start with the dual met. Now, the key here is that you are looking at two movements operating simultaneously in parallel within one case. Now, there is a single regulating organ. You can see it right there. It's a 21,600 vibration per hour rate, very large moment of inertia. The entire movement is made out of a nickel copper compound called German silver. Hint, hint, we'll see more of that in a moment. But the bottom line is that it's done for a very specific reason. The two mainspring barrels, and you can see each one winds in a different direction as you turn the crown, power parallel drivetrains that meet at the regulator. Now, the escapement itself is indexing both of them, it's activating both of them, but the separate mainspring barrels are providing power. What this allows you to do is run the chronograph without any negative consequence to the amplitude of the balance, because when the chronograph kicks in, instead of drawing down the power of one mainspring, it adds the power of that second mainspring, so the result is a wash. Both of these functions operate with chronometer levels of efficiency and timing precision, and believe me, I've tested the theory, it holds up. And at the same time, they don't interfere with each other, and that's the genius of the Duomet. It's based on an 1881 chronometer-grade pocket watch that JLC built but could never serially produce in the 19th or 20th centuries because the technology to make the parts to that precision in anything resembling more than a prototype production process simply didn't exist. The watch features dual power reserves and a digital minutes disc for the single digit minutes and for tens of minutes and the hours you have two hands here on the chronograph dial, you have two white gold foy hands here for the hours and minutes plus a center seconds hand for the time of day seconds, the civil time seconds. This is an incredibly complex piece with 390 parts. It is a mechanical and craft masterpiece, completely hand finished. This represents the highest level of finish available from JLC. Gorgeous Soleil Cote de Genève in a sunburst pattern radiating out from that signature single regulating organ, the heart and soul of the whole piece. Also polished screws, beveled edges to all bridges and plates and levers. There's linear dressage, there's sunburst dressage, that's the graining on the wheels. There's beautiful polished four column column wheel right here that regulates the mono pusher chronograph movement. Everything about this watch represents the best that JLC can do, both in terms of finish and in terms of engineering. And believe me, when you're talking about Jezure Le Coult, that's an awful lot. 42 millimeters in diameter, white gold. I'll show it to you on the wrist real quick. On my wrist, and I should mention that uh, I'm very partial to this watch because I uh, may have one in my personal collection. But uh, ask the man who owns one, he'll say only good things. Fits beautifully on the wrist. 42 millimeters, about 13 millimeters thick. 
There's no overlap, but it's got a lot of presence. It's definitely bigger than a strictly traditional dress watch. And I should mention that the dial is a matte dial. It's not a glossy dial, as in the, the Datagraph, which has a little bit of a gloss to it. This is a matte finish. It's very unique. It allows for a high contrast between all indications of the chronograph and the hours and minutes. My, my wrist is 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters, and the watch wears and looks fantastic. A ton of presence. It's a visual punch in the face, but done with the best of manners. This thing has impact. Now I want to talk about the Datagraph, because the Datagraph, in a lot of ways, is the more traditional of the two. Although the Duomet has a mechanical heritage dating back to the 19th century, the Datagraph has an aesthetic sensibility that is rooted in, for the most part, that same era. Every Longa is, in a way, sort of a throwback to the pocket watch era, because it's evocative of those styles from the dying pocket watch age that was really the last flourishing of East German watchmaking before World War II struck, before the collectivization under communism. So there's always a built-in vintage aesthetic, late pocket watch sensibility to the look of a Longa. And at 39 millimeters, this platinum Alanga Unzuna datagraph, the original variant unveiled in 1999, it's definitely a more, I would say, discreet, more traditional, uh, a little bit more conservative look than the Duomet. It's also a little bit more conservative mechanically, but it's a craft and mechanical wonder in its own right. Now, a few days ago, I got called out, and correctly so, because I called the lugs on the datagraph soldered. They are not, in fact, soldered. They're screwed in, but seamlessly fitted, and this actually aids in disassembly during the process of servicing the watch. You can see there is contrasting polish on the flanks. The case flanks themselves are brushed in a linear fashion. Then the bezel and the lugs are polished, and the case back itself, which you can see just there, is polished. Now, the Duomet, which was actually my, uh, it actually kind of helped to deceive me the other day, because I looked at these lugs, which I know to be soldered, and then I looked at the Longa, which has a very similar case finishing and case structure, and I thought, oh, soldered lugs. In fact, these are screwed on, and that is another distinction. There is a distinction in the way they are built. There's also a distinction in the complications, whereas here you have, obviously, two movements in one case, two separate dials, a foudroyant, and twin power reserves, but you don't have a date. Here you have a grand date, that famous panorama datum, emblematic of Alanga Unzuna, since copied by Glashuta Original. It's become something of an icon of both of the major East German watch manufacturers in Glashuta, and in this case, it's mounted at 12 o'clock, and since it is the 8th, one of those discs is blank, but it's usually a double-digit date. Now, the watch does feature unique use of different tones, shapes, and colors. You can see that there is a tachometer scale outboard of applied stick and Roman numerals. Those are applied white gold, white gold hands. Another great distinction here is the use of these almost champagne-colored subdials. Quite beautiful. You look at that, you instantly know you're looking at a datagraph, even if you can't read the name, even if the marquee's covered up. This is a classical longa. It is an iconic longa. It's a company that's only been around for 20 years, but in that time, it's acquired a couple of icons, a couple of models that, from not one arm's length, but from across a room, just scream, a longa unsuna, Saxony, Glasuta. This is one of them. And the fact that this watch also features loomed hands means that it has another... I would say practical element, if you want to call that a feature, that's a major distinction. You can see this watch at night. You can't see the date, but you can see the hands. That's something that the Duomet does not feature. The Duomet basically goes dark at night. But you know what? If ever there were a watch worth searching out a street light or a lamp, this is it. But it is an important distinction to note. Now on the case back, you'll also see something different, but in a lot of ways reminiscent of what you see on the Duomet. The finishing traditions are entirely different. The one common thread is the use of the nickel copper compound, German silver. Not actually an alloy of silver. It is nevertheless deeply beautiful. In both cases, you can see that it has a golden hue to it, and that golden hue is the result of the copper that's in the compound, and it will become darker with time. It will grow richer and more intense. Now here you see the engraved balance cock that's quite large in this reference in proportion to the size of the case and in proportion to the size of the movement. It's actually a little bit of an outlier, even for Longa, a company that has made the hand-engraved balance cock 
one of the signature elements of its movement finishing, and that is purely to the advantage of the datagraph owner. These are beautifully engraved, and each one is a little bit different because not only are there several different artisans carving them, but because it is a completely hand-wrought piece, each one is going to vary even within the hands, even within the facilities of a single artisan's cottage, and most of them do work in the cottage industry fashion from home, delivering their produce to the Langa factory in Glasuta. Uh, the bottom line is that this is also one of the more entertaining Langa movements. Most of them feature a three-quarter bridge that covers all of the visible train. Because This one does have what appears to be a three-quarter bridge underneath. It is actually a composite of plates that's designed to look like a three-quarter bridge and have that same shape and span across the case back. But the difference here, beyond the fact that it's a composite three-quarter bridge, is the fact that all of the flyback chronograph elements, and yes, this is a flyback chronograph, resets without stopping and starts again in flyback fashion, but all of those elements are visible above the plate, so you get a lot of the best of both worlds. You get that longer level of finishing with black polish on almost every surface, from the column wheel caps to the screw at center of column wheel, to the cover of the escapement cock, to all of the screws, polished and slotted, gorgeous black polish that almost seems to morph like a chimera as you move it through the light. You can see it turns black alternately and then reflects as I move it. That's because it is the highest level of polish available on movement components, and it only reflects light in one direction. From every other angle, it appears black, hence the name, Poly Noir. Now, the bottom line is that we also have the screwed chiton, although normally those would be buried down on the plate, holding the gear train in place. Langa has cleverly put them on some of the chronograph bridge components so that you can see that the jewels are held in place by golden chiton that are retained by cobalt heat blued screws. That's an old pocket watch assembly tradition. It's been retained for the sake of aesthetics and heritage on the modern Langa movements. And Langa does a really great job of bringing those chitons up out of the base plate, where, or rather the primary bridge, I should say, and putting them within the chronograph bridges just so you get the same visual effect on a chronograph. Beautifully executed. This is like looking into a jungle. There's so much going on here in the caliber L951 that it really rewards repeat viewing. And that ongoing adventure of discovery is part of the pleasure of owning the Alanga Unsuna datagraph. Each one of these watches is exceptionally special. Each one of these watches comes from something that can only be described as one of the top watchmakers in the business. Langa and JLC are doing this better than anyone else. In terms of innovation, both of them are top of their game. In terms of elegance, respect for their heritage, determination to build new heritage, and in terms of execution, taking a concept, whether it be the dual wing concept or the flyback chronograph, to the nth degree. There is nothing about either one of these watches that disappoints. It's purely a function of taste. Do you want the dual wing movement? Do you want the more avant-garde neo-vintage aesthetic of the dual met with the 42 millimeter white gold case? Or do you want the more traditional look of the datagraph with the platinum 39 millimeter case? Neither one will disappoint. There is no wrong answer. Check out both of these watches both 100% complete with all factory equipment on our website, Watch You Want. I'm confident that if you're in the market for an absolute top-of-the-line chronograph, you have an open mind and a sense of adventure, either one, the Jeje Lecoultre Duomet or the Alanka Unzuna Datagraph, would be the watch you want.